You're listening to episode number 104 of the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. In this episode, I talk about something that can quite literally, should you choose to use it, can quite literally transform your life. And that is using your intention and using your will. I don't mean willpower. I mean using your will to create and manifest. So if you'd like to learn how to set your intention intention, and to use your will, stay tuned. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so the last episode, I touched a bit on using your intention, setting your intention, and using your will to really create whatever kind of life experience that it is that you want. And I want to dig deeper in this episode, because I want to talk about because see, this is really, really powerful. And I want to talk about how you can use your intention and setting your intention on a daily basis and using your will to create. The reason I'm doing it, it's it's synchronicity, I guess I should say, is there's so much chaos in in the world right now with everything that's going on and people hoarding and the coronavirus and this and, you know, all the all the things that are going on. I'm curious about what experience you want in the midst of all of this. I mean, what do you want to happen in your life? What kind of experience do you want to be going through right now? You know, as I observe the world, so many people are going through because they're choosing to, they're going through hell. Uh, They're going through all this fear, all this negativity, all this scarcity, all this lack. And they're doing it because they choose to do it. Now, you can very well have that experience as well, or you can use your will and your intention and create a significantly different experience. It's entirely up to you. So the first question I have for you, and I think I asked you this question last week, is what experience do you want? And relative to this, you know, this podcast, what we're going to talk about and the coronavirus, what experience do you want right now in your life in the midst of all the things that are going on in the world? You know, I also see right now, I see so many people, I'm going to actually segue here a little bit. So, oh my gosh, it's so taxing. To, I don't even watch it, but it can be just so taxing. So I just tune out. But so many people living in what I call their 3D, meaning their physical body, and living in the 3D world. And no one's using their mind, which is what we're going to talk about here. I mean, everyone's just looking at the physical, the physical world around them. And so many people, I'd say the majority of the population is just freaking out like there's no tomorrow. And there's no, there's really no reason for that. You know, when I say also 3D, that means the physical body. So many people, I mean, you know, the name of this podcast is, you know, the Jim Fortin podcast, living your life from the inside out. And I see the majority of the population living from the outside in. And that basically is abandoning their, their ability as a cosmic being, as a human being, as a spiritual being. They're abandoning their mental ability to create the experience they want for the chaos and the fear in the external world. And hopefully you're not doing that yourself. Before I get into this podcast, I want to recap something that I mentioned before. And I know I've mentioned it probably in two or three episodes. Uh, feel free to look it up, uh, to Google it, to look for it on YouTube. But I, I talk about an, an experiment called the double slit experiment. Double slit, S-L-I-T, experiment. And you can look for it on YouTube as well. And I I believe there's a short video, probably four or five minutes long by, I think it's called Professor Quantum. And the whole gist of the video is, and research physics has demonstrated this, 
is I'm going to go, I'm going to kind of um, say it in my own words, is that the physical universe, meaning the world around you, bends to your consciousness, meaning where you hold your thinking. So what that means in simple terms is the experience that you have in your life with the physical world around you is the experience that you first have in your mind with your expectations about what the physical world around you is supposed to be like. In the double slit experiment uh, video on YouTube, to me, the most important part of that entire video or the most relevant part is the last 30 seconds where Professor Quantum says that the scientist, by observing the experiment, they collapse the wave into the particle. And physics is all wave and particle. So basically what science has proven, which is what ancient wisdom has said for thousands of years, and I've said it over and over and over, you know, in this podcast, is that the physical world bends to your consciousness. So let me go back to where I started this podcast, is what experience do you want right now in this crazy world around you? Because you're going to create that experience based upon where you hold your consciousness. Let me go a a parallel direction here. The, well, basically, the reason I gave you the, gave you the, the double slit experiment is because hardcore science, which physics is the most precise science on the planet, proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that you and what goes on between your two ears affects the physical world around you. There was an experiment done back in the 70s called the Jacobi Zeilerbaum experiment. What they did is they put people in electromagnetic isolated rooms. Basically, what that would mean today is that you could not call in the room or out of the room with a cell phone because cell phones are electromagnetic signals, and these rooms were electromagnetically sealed. What they discovered is, or what they had here, let me give you more of the experiment, is they had two people, one in each room, and they said, we want you to meditate on each other. And what they did is they hooked the, you know, each person up to an EEG, an electroencephalograph, which looks at their brain waves and brain wave patterns and brain waves. And what they did is they flashed a bright light in one of the person's eyes as they were met. Well, they asked, let me back up here a little bit. Sorry about that. They asked both people to meditate on the other person in the other room. Think about the person in the other room. And then what they did is as, per, as each person was meditating on the other, one person, boom, they flashed a bright light right into their eyes. And as they did that, neurologically, their EEG spiked. Why? Because there is neurological activity based upon the external light shining in their eyes. Here's where it gets really interesting, is that the EEG of the other person in the other room where they had no light flashed in their eyes also spiked. What they discovered, now just, you know, let me explain this out. This only happened 24% of the time. What they discovered though, is scientifically speaking, that 24% of the time was not just random. It was scientifically, statistically very important, meaning that even that 24% of the time is enough to make it st statistically significant. What they, what they came to surmise is that when you're thinking of someone, you are affecting them energetically. What I tell people is, you know, for example, a very simple, and it's happened to all of us. Have you ever said before, hey, I wonder what Bob is doing? And the second you say that, your cell phone's in your pocket, and it's ringing the second you say, hey, I wonder what Bob's doing. And you look at your cell phone, and who is it? It's Bob. Well, we're all connected in... And consciousness, it's kind of like a soup and we're all in this soup, so to speak. So what I want to share with you is number one, by the double slit experiment, ancient wisdom has also said this, is you're creating your world based upon where you hold your, your intention, your attention, and your will. You are also affecting people around you by where you're holding your thoughts about them, evidenced by the J J uh, Jacobi Zollerbaum experiment. So what I'm sharing with you relative to what's going on in the world right now, again, what experience of life do you want? So we're going to talk about holding your intention and your, your will and um, intention, you know, where it needs to be. But secondly, 
what thoughts are you holding for older people? And I, or other people as well. I meant to say other as well, and then older. But I look on, you know, and I'm trying to stay off from it, but I have groups that I, that, that are in my coaching programs on, on Facebook. So I have to log on. And so many people are like, well, I'm not worried about me, but I'm worried about my grandma or my grandparents or my elderly parents. Well, all that being said, you worrying about them, what are you projecting onto them? So what I want you to take away here, and I've said it over and over and over in our time together here, is there is something which is, we can call it divine intelligence, we can call it consciousness, whatever you want, the quantum field. There is something beyond your 3D body, yet most people, not just right now, but it's evident right now, most people are living completely and I mean completely in their 3D physical reality, and they are flipping out. They are doing what I have learned over the years to call flipping the coin. Heads or tails, heads or tails. What's it going to be today? Fear and solace and maybe some peace and fear, 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 fear. Let me flip the coin all day long. So I think it's obvious by right now, and this at this time in this podcast, and you being with me for a while, is that you can influence your physical world with your thoughts. So what thoughts are you holding about, about not get, you know, being able to get toilet paper? As a matter of fact, we have plenty here in the house, but I looked on Amazon today and I'm like, well, you know, maybe we should see what's out there. And everything is sold out on Amazon. And I'm not going to go into fear over toilet paper, but what I know is the world is not running out of toilet paper. It's basically people that are hoarding things and the suppliers can't keep up with people hoarding. Completely off topic. When I was at, but on topic to some degree, I was at Whole Foods a couple of days ago. This guy, and, and people were cleaning things out, and I got what I needed. I'm not a hoarder. I'm not hoarding things. But this guy bought 100 pounds of chicken and 100 pounds of beef. And I heard him say, now I can take care of my family. And my thought was, well, you're being extraordinarily selfish. Because what about other families, when you're wiping the meat counter out, what about other families also that might be here today to, to purchase meat, you know, maybe for a week or 10 days or whatever, yet you're buying out the entire counter because you're being a selfish SOB. I'm going to leave it at that, but look how people are showing up. And what I want to share with you, you know, there's no need to get into the fear. Things are going to recover at some point. So be very careful with your thinking. You know, also about that is I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Nobody does. Even forget the coronavirus. No, no one knows what's going to happen tomorrow. You don't even know what's going to happen one minute from now. And that being said, there are so many people getting into fear and worry about what's going to happen tomorrow and next week and next month when that's of zero value because we don't know. But what I do know is this, based upon what I've just shared with you, what I do know is that I can influence my material world by my intention and by my will. So, you know, I'm just like you. I mean, I don't, I don't know where you are in life, but I'm just like you. And fortunately, I do have financial fortitude. Um, I've invested over the years and I have money in the market, which has dropped significantly. And I've not literally put one, 1% of thought into it, but I'm like you. I mean, I've got bills and, uh, you know, a couple of homes and car payments and, you know, several employees. And I have responsibilities just like you. But I haven't gotten into the fear. And right now, as fate would have it, I am right in the middle of what we call an internet marketing. I'm right in the middle of a launch, which means I'm putting my offering, my programs out to people when people are going crazy. I mean, this is not the opportune time for the most part to, to put things out for a launch unless I want to frame it like, you know what, this could be an amazing time because I can help people. I mean, what you're learning here at the podcast, we go eons beyond that in my transformational coaching programs. But what I want to share with you is I'm like you and I've got bills and car payments and insurance and everything else. And I was even in the hospital two weeks ago with heart failure. But you know what? As I'm not getting into fear because I know at a soul level, I know at a core level, I know that by using my intention peacefully and setting my intention on a daily basis, and using my will that I can create the experience that I want, even in the midst of chaos in the crazy world right now. Okay, so let's talk about intention and will. 
I mentioned a few days ago, I think in the last podcast, I'd mentioned the quote by Levi Eliaphas. And if anybody, which I've mentioned last week, if anybody said, Jim, what is your favorite quote? And somebody even today in a group, it's called the Be Do Have group. I think many of you might even be in it over on Facebook. It's where we're talking about the transformational coaching program. When I said fear is the idleness of will, somebody said I should really be getting it, but I don't. If somebody asked me and they said, Jim, what is your favorite quote, bar none? It would be hard for me to decide because you hear me say often that you are where your attention is. I mean, that is just fundamental. You are where your attention is. And even look where your attention is right now this second based upon what's going on in the world around you. I think my favorite quote, though, would be is fear is the idleness of will. And basically what that means is that if you're getting into fear, I'm going to paraphrase here from a, this is a Leah Fast Levi. Basically, fear is the idleness of will. What that means is that if you're getting into fear, you're choosing not to use your will. And I'm going to go deeper into that in this episode. But basically, if you're in fear and you're into nonsense, it's because you're not using the the inherent, I'm going to use a word I don't use a lot in this podcast, but God, um, divine, spirit, cos- you know, cosmic consciousness, the quantum field. But if you're getting into fear, you're not using, because I use this word because a lot of people do, you're not using the skills that God gave you. You're not using the tools that God gave you. So basically this means there's no need. There's no need for you to get into the fear Because you have the inborn skill and ability to use your intention and your will to create the experience that you want. And that being truth, and it is, why would you get into the nonsense that the rest of the world is getting into? Okay, let's take this apart. Just There's not much to take apart, but intention, what is that? Intention, people will say things, for example, I didn't intend that to happen. And that's a misnomer when people say that. The reason something happened they didn't intend to happen is because they didn't set their intention. I know that I mentioned in this podcast when I travel. Anytime I travel anywhere, I set my intent that I'm going to walk out my back door, get in my, well, not get in my car anymore, but call Uber or whatever. But I'm going to travel to the airport safely. I'm going to fly somewhere safely. I'm going to land safely. I'm going to do what I need to do. I'm going to hop on an airplane, come back home, and walk through my back door safely. Literally. Any time that I fly, I set my intention that things are going to happen safely for me. Many times people will say, I didn't intend for that to happen. Well, if you're in a car accident, no one ever says, oh, I intended that to happen. Well, it's not that you intended it not, uh, uh, it's not that you didn't intend it. It's that you did not have intention for safety. So many people use the word intention or intent as as a misnomer. They're not using it properly. But what I look at on a morning basis, which I talked about last week, and we'll talk about more today, is in the morning, when I walk into the meditation room in my house, what is my intention, which I didn't mention last week, but what is my intention for me? And then what is my intention for the people that I can impact today? So what I didn't didn't mention last week is what is my intention to be of service for other people in the world? Now, Will. What is will? Okay, have you ever heard the old phrase before, if there's a will, there's a way? Most people confuse will with willpower. Willpower is, I'm not going to have that donut. I'm not going to have that donut. I'm not going to have that donut. That is conscious analytical thought. That is not will. That is trying to use your willpower. And um, neural research has demonstrated, and psychological research has demonstrated that willpower is a finite resource. As a matter of fact, the more willpower that you use, it's like a cell phone battery, the more you run the battery down. Let me say this as simply as I possibly can. Have you ever wanted something before? And you're like, I will have that. And it can be a job. It can be a relationship relationship of some sort. And I do want to touch upon that in a moment. It can be some brand new shoes, a brand new car. It can be a house. But when you say, I will have that, in that moment, you are, you are what I call casting, like casting a net. You are casting your will. So again, it's not willpower, but it's what I call the life force in you. 
and that is an extraordinarily powerful life force. Now let's take this apart. I'm going to break this down for you even further. I think, and it's something I've learned about this particular launch, completely off topic, is I think it's going to change the way I approach this podcast. What I've learned in this particular launch, um, and all the people that are in my what I call my Facebook group that are learning about the transformational coaching program, is which I've always known is that like attracts like. But I never realized to what degree until this launch that I truly do attract people that are what I call waking up spiritually, people that are getting it, people that are aligned with the message that I'm sharing in this podcast. That being said, in the past, I've created this podcast more for the general population and the population kind of just like maybe starting to wake up. And I think that I'm probably in time very soon going to make the episodes even more targeted and more directed to content that I know my target market would love. And my target market is people that I consider to be not religious in terms of organized religious, but spiritual, meaning they're waking up to the divineness and the cosmic force within them. Now, let me go back to my comment. All right, first off, and here's where I was going to go, is that you are an energy system. Your entire body is an energy system. I mean, you have an EEG, you have an EKG. But what I've never shared before on this podcast is, and this is really simple to understand, is that you're an energy system that functions on different levels of energetic function. So what I mean by that is that you function physically and you function non-physically. Both are energy But one is a slower form of energy. You know, as we learned in seventh grade, you know, science class, you can knock on the table right next to you, you know, thunk, 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 and it's wood. But that wood is still energy, and that wood is electrons, neutrons, and protons that are moving at a slower speed than, let's say, a um, a gas of some sort. It's still energy, but it's, it's not as dense as electrons, neutrons, and protons as you would find in a table or a brick and, you know things that are very dense. Okay, so we know that you're physical and non-physical, but you function on multiple levels even as an energetic being. You function at the lowest and slowest form of energy, which is physical. And most people live at this level. They live completely their entire life at the physical level of being. And that is the slowest form of energy that you have available to you. Then after physical We have sound, which you're listening to sound right now, listening to my voice. And I did create an episode on this recently, is that we speak our lives into existence. When I say recently, maybe it wasn't recently, maybe it was three or four months ago, but we speak our lives into existence via sound. So that being said, what sound are you using right now in the midst of this turmoil in the world? What sound are you speaking to speak your life's experience into existence? Then, on top of that, we have light, which is faster than sound, and sound is faster than physical energy. We have light, and then on top of that, we have, which I've never mentioned in this podcast, the fastest form of energy in the universe is thought energy. Thought, your thoughts travel faster than anything else in the universe. So... What I'm curious about is, and by the way, this is a great learning ground and a great, no, not learning. This is a great practice ground for a lot of us is because if you can keep your wits all about you right now with the nonsense, it's nonsense in the world, you can keep your wits about you at any point. But the question I have is considering the fact that thought is the fastest traveling energy, where have you been keeping your thought energy? So consider that where. And what on what have you been keeping your thought energy? Next, are you strong or are you weak in your thought projection? Strong would be actually at peace and knowing that, you know what? Yes, I can create. I can manifest. I need to stay in peace. I need to, I need to maintain my, my well-being of mind, my peace of mind. That's strength. Fear is running around like chicken little with your head cut off. Oh my God, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. The sky is falling. So 
I also want to point out here with a lot of compassion, because I can put myself in, in the place of some of you. I'm not going to go too far here, but 25 years ago, I was waiting tables. And I'm putting myself in the place of people that would be waiting tables or attending bar right now. And many establishments and, and restaurants and bars have been shut down across the U.S. Well, I have to guess if you're waiting tables and attending bar, you don't have a lot of money in your pocket. But what I want to share with you is this. If I were in your place at this point in my life, I would be shifting very quickly and saying, okay, you know what? Where I was getting my income from is shifted. What can I do to shift myself to create value in people's lives to bring more revenue and more abundance back in my life again? So just food for thought. Because I remember, I want to share this with you very quickly. I had a friend many years ago, uh, back in 2009 and 10 when the, when the economy came down, and she was a high-end recruiter in New York City. And I used to be a recruiter many, many years ago in New York City as well. And I, her, name, her name is Tracy. And I said, Tracy, how come so many mid-level people, how come so many mid-level people are out of jobs for a year or two? And what she said was very powerful. And I want to share it with you right now. Long-term, will you need this advice or this sharing? Probably not. I don't know. But I'm going to share with you where I would be mentally and emotionally if I were in some occupation that got, that got, got cut off very quickly. I said, why are so many mid-level sales people, uh, mid-level managers, why are they out of a job for a year or two years? And she said, oh, that's easy. Because they are making candlesticks in a world that's working on the electric light bulb. Now, look at that. Your world right in front of you, for many of you, have sh it's shifted. So are you going to make the candlestick or are you going to shift to the electric light bulb? So food for thought for you. Let me explain to you how you have been using your will your entire lifetime to create, but you haven't even realized that you're using your will. Okay. So let me ask you, has there ever been a time that you wanted something? You wanted, let's say you wanted brand new shoes. Maybe you're a kid and you're like, I want those, you know, Air Nikes or whatever, or you wanted a brand new car or a brand new house or, or a brand new job or whatever. Has there ever been a time that you wanted something and metaphorically you rolled up your sleeves, you put your head down and you went to work to create what you wanted? Well, being, an, being a multi-layer, multi-level energy system at the lowest level of energy, which is physical, let's, let's keep this really simple. Let's say that you want brand new Nike Air Jordan tennis shoes. I don't even know if they make them anymore, but years ago, they were really pricey. So let's say that you're a kid and you want, but this will apply to all of you and everybody, this will make sense to you. Let's say that you want those Air Jordans and they're 250 bucks or whatever they cost and you're a kid. So that what you say is, well, I'm going to, I'm going to wash dishes or I'm going to do chores or I'm going to, I'm going to mow yards or I'm going to groom dogs or whatever it is. But notice, you say you're going to do something which engages the physical aspect of you. Why? Because you actually have put your head down, you put your nose to the grindstone, and you're going to create those Air Jordans, those Nike Air Jordans or whatever the hell they're called. You want those. Notice you've engaged yourself physically. But what I also want you to notice, and here's the most important part of what I'm explaining. What I'm also wanting you to get here is notice how you felt while you were engaged in the physical activity. Because one is the physical activity at the lowest level of energy, and the other is using your will and your intention at the highest level of energy. So you're literally using two levels of energy, not knowing you're doing it because you're only looking at the physical level of energy. So hopefully that makes sense to you that you can have anything that you want when you actually work from that model and you will it. Let me give you an example of setting intention. When I lived in New York City many years ago, I talked about waiting tables. I wasn't sure if I was going to leave New York City and move back to Dallas, Texas, or stay in New York City. I'm not going to go in and make this very long, but basically I said, you know what? Um, I, I want to get a roommate, which is what a lot of people do in New York, in New York City. And one day I lived on the Upper East Side and I was on the Upper West Side. I was at 72nd and Broadway. And I decided that I wanted to live at 72nd and Broadway. And I remember that I was meeting with a friend one day where Saturday we were going to hit Central Park and I was at 72nd and Broadway and I said, you know what? It's really noisy at 72nd and Broadway. It's a major intersection. I want to live on 73rd and Broadway. 
Later that day, I got home and I pulled out a piece of paper and I, and I wrote down, I said, this is what I'm creating. I want to live, I want an apartment on 73rd between Central Park West and Broadway. I want my own room, my own bathroom. I want a spiritual roommate and somebody who likes dogs because I had a black lab at that time. And I said, I want my rent to be very close to what it is now. Now, I swear to you on whatever good book you might believe in, I swear to you what I'm telling you is the absolute truth. And I put these things on a piece of paper. Now, I do work by internal guidance. And one day, I heard some internal guidance that said, hey, go to a roommate service. And I said, I don't want to go to a roommate service. I'm just talking to myself in my head and my internal guidance. And I said, I want a sandwich. And the internal guidance said, no, go to a roommate service. And I said, no, I want a sandwich. And the internal guidance, which we all have, said, go to a roommate service. Well, I did. Um, I looked one up online. This was many years ago. Um, I went to one. And they said, hey, Jim, we don't really have anything that you're looking for um, right now, but we'll let you know. When I got back to my apartment, the little light was blinking on my answering machine. Again, this was 25 years ago. And they said, hey, Jim, five minutes after you walked out, somebody who walked in and they have seemingly exactly what you're looking for. Well, I went over as the first person who met this person. Um, about three weeks later, he had interviewed like a lot of people. He called me and said, hey, Jim, I picked you. Well, I moved into the apartment and I did have my own bedroom. I had my own bathroom. He was very spiritual. And I said, how come you picked me over all the people that you, you interviewed? And he goes, well, you're a nice guy and I like you, but I really like your dog, which she was an amazing black lab. Now, here, here's the kicker. Um, there are, I, I believe, like 16 million people who live in the greater New York City area, 8 million in Manhattan. My address, are you ready? My address was 170 West 73rd Street. 170 West 73rd. And my rent was 78 cents more than the rent that I was currently paying. So you tell me, you tell me how I set my intention two weeks prior and I said, no, I'm going to live on 73rd Street. And I put this on paper. And two weeks later, I walked right into this exact, exact scenario. That is the power of setting your intention. And what I can do, you can do. Many years ago, out of college, a good friend of mine, Melissa, we were friends in college, and she told me this story many, many years ago, and this happened many years ago. There was a radio contest, and she lived in Houston, Texas. Basically, if you were the 99th caller in this radio contest, they play a song every day, you're the 99th caller, you get a key to the house. And they played this contest for 99 days. 99 days, 99th caller, you get a key. And by the way, I'd never even done the math. I mean, how many keys is that? That's a lot of keys, 99 days times 99 keys. Anyway, Melissa said, and here's literally the power of using your will and setting your intent. Melissa said, I'm going to win that house. That is my house. And she said it just like that. Well, one day she basically was a 99 caller, 99 caller, got a key. When she went to, and then they had this big, you know, big to do where they go and they have the big event, the radio stations there, and then they're going to see who's, you know, whose key's got to open up the door. Well, when Melissa got there, she said that, that there were all these people there. There were obviously 99 people. She said all these people, and she said to herself, what are these people doing in my yard? They're destroying my grass. Well... When it came time for Melissa to put her key in the door, it fit. It worked. She opened the door and she won the house. That's intention and will. There's a book I mentioned that very briefly here at the podcast. You may want to get it. It's not in front of me right now. It's called The Visionary Window by, um, I believe I'm, I'm remembering this correctly, Amit, A-M-I-T, uh, Gawain, G-A-W-A-I-N. He is a physicist, and he talks about, in scientific terms, but makes it simple, how things like this happen. So what I want to share with you, we're going to wrap up here, is that 
And by the way, my brother-in-law, the shaman, taught me this, and somebody had actually asked recently, why does Jim mention his brother-in-law, the shaman, so much? The reason why is because they've always got new listeners here, and they don't know. My brother-in-law is the real deal, is a shaman. I mean, he's a shaman that you would find in the Amazon. He's a healer. People come to him for healing, uh, which I'm going to talk about in the next episode for you and people you know and your friends and family. Um, his, his waiting list is a year and a half long. He's very inexpensive, but he's a real deal. He's a real shaman. He does not have a website. He started the apprenticing when he was six years old. But he was talking to me last week, and this is something that he said to me. He said, intention, and the, the energy behind intent is the most abundant energy in the universe. So consider that. Your intention and setting your intent comes from the most abundant universe in the energy. I mean, in the universe, the most abundant energy in the universe. There we go. And actually, the reason I'm even, I had the idea for this podcast, because he called me when I was in the hospital. And he said, here's how to heal yourself very, very quickly. And it's akin to what I'm sharing with you right now is setting my intent every day to be perfectly healthy, which I'm, I'm doing extremely well out of the hospital and using my will and my will to heal myself. So as I'd mentioned in the last episode, we're going to wrap up here in just a moment. As I'd mentioned every morning, I go into my, to my meditation room and I, I, I sit for quite some time in silence and I set my intention for what I want to happen today, and I use my will. So for example, I went walking tonight uh, because my cardiologist said, get your butt out and start walking. And you know what? I am doing many things in my behavior that are at the lowest level of energy, which are physical, but behind those is my intention and my will that, you know what? I will be 100%, or actually I am 100 hundred percent because I'm working from what I call point B. I'm not seeing myself entirely as healing. I'm seeing myself as already healed and I'm doing the physical activity to facilitate the will that, you know what? I am 100% well. So your transformational takeaway is this. You can use your intention and your will to create any life experience that you want even in the midst of the chaos in the 3D world right now. So my question for you is a question that I started this podcast with. What experience of life and what's going on in the world do you want? Use your intention and use your will to create it. Okay, episode number 105 next week is, it may not be for all of you, I don't know, but you know what? I'm going to share with you what my brother-in-law shared with me, uh, the shaman, Don Javier. He called me last week and he said, you can share this with everyone that you interact with, meaning everyone in coaching with me, anyone that I have contact with, he goes, you can share this if you want. He told me and he shared with me, with me how to holistically heal the coronavirus very quickly if you should contract it. Now, take it. Don't take it. Listen, don't listen entirely up to you, but I'm going to share with you what he shared with me on the next episode about how to holistically heal yourself very quickly should you contract the coronavirus. That being said also, I am not an MD. I'm not dispensing medical advice. If for any reason between even now and then, and even after then, if you think you need to seek medical advice or go to the ER or your your family practitioner, by all means, please do that. Okay, for now, that wraps up this episode. I will catch you on next Wednesday's episode. Take care. Stay well. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. 
If you would, please leave a review on iTunes and a good one, by the way, (laughs) I'd be grateful. And through your assistance together, we can transform more lives.